Hello and welcome to the first official devlog of Amber Roots. I want to kick off the devlog series with what I think is probably the most important missing feature in Amber Roots right now, which is of course the combat. Now, I've worked on some prototype combat systems in the past, so I have a pretty good idea of how to set up something here. Uh, but I wanted to do something from scratch using some of the new systems that I've developed in the game over the last year. The game will use a turn-based party system for combat, uh, something like what you might see in old school Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest, but unfortunately we can't dive right into that. There's a couple of other tasks that also need to be done in order for the combat system to really function the way I want it to. And so we're going to look at a couple of tasks right now and see what needs to get done first. Alright, so I've divided up some tasks for me to start on. Uh, the first one being the monster team, then turn-based battle system itself, and then wild monsters. And if you're wondering what these are, uh, I'll go through them real quick. The monster team idea is, uh, I've got some subtasks here that you can see. The idea is you'll be able to have more than four monsters in your ranch. And so I need a way for the player to be able to choose from the monsters that are active and that are out in your ranch, which of the four do you actually want in your combat team? So I need a way for the player to choose those, and I need to add a couple of other pieces of functionality that a team select screen uh, should really have, like removing monsters from the team or reordering them. That'll be the first task, and then I'll want to work on a turn-based combat system, which I'll go into a little bit later, and then wild monsters. Um, in other words, creatures out in the in the wilderness that you can interact with. Um, for example, they chase you down and touch you, and then when that happens, you get actually thrust into combat. So these are all sort of related, and I'm going to work on them in this order, I think, uh, starting with the monster team. Now, I've already got a system in place for picking out monsters from a list of active monsters in your ranch. Uh, that I'm actually using in the um, activity stations here. So when I go to assign a monster for the punching bag, for example, um, I do have a monster selection screen. It doesn't look great and it's not super informative right now, but it's enough to tell me which monsters are already scheduled to other activities and I can assign a monster to a current activity that I'm interacting with. Uh, and I can, I can assign another one and it tells me this monster is already assigned. Um, and this one isn't. I, ha I can go from page to page to see the different monsters. And if you're wondering why there's only two monsters per page, um, that's only because I was testing out the functionality for going from page to page. Um, but obviously in future iterations of this, you'll be able to have more than just two monsters per page. Um, but basically I need to use this screen, this functionality in order to pick out your team. Okay, so after some time, I think I've got a system that's working fairly well. I can now um, open up a screen that is for my monster team. And here you can see that you've got four slots for your monsters. So even if you have more than four monsters in your ranch, you'll only be able to take four with you on adventures. I can add a new monster with this button. And then it takes me to the monster selection screen. Um, and I can see all of my active monsters just as before and I can assign, uh, just like how I would for an activity, I can assign a monster to the team and it'll put it up um, in, the, in an open slot. In this case, the slots work in such a way where it always puts the monster on the next available slot. Um, so that's why the add button is down here rather than in each slot. So I can add another monster and I can see it here. Now when you have more than one monster, I added um, some buttons here, which don't have any feedback right now, uh, so that's something I need to address at some point. Um, but these buttons, what they'll do is uh, shift the monsters around. So I can move a monster up on the roster or down on the roster. Um, but as you can see, the buttons only appear for the appropriate direction. With only two monsters, uh, I can only move one up and one down. I can also remove a monster from the team. Um, and I'll remove the slime so you can see that that will shift the flying snake up. There we go. And I can add all four monsters. And if I do that, um, I'll have 
uh, you can see the different arrows here, the buttons, so I can move the monsters around in the team um, to uh, change their order. And the order doesn't really matter much for now. Uh, I'm not thinking of implementing anything where the order will really make a big difference. But just to help keep the player organized, I could see in the future adding a switch button so that you can click that and then click another monster that you just want to switch with. So if you want to move this guy all the way to the top, you don't have to press the button several times. But for now, I think this is manageable. Um, the other thing I didn't show was if you go, um, let me remove one of these to show it. Um, if you go to add a monster that's already in the team, like if I want to try to add the slime again, uh, it actually gives me a message that it's already in the team and just hit OK and nothing happens and close out of here and the team is um, undamaged. And I think this is pretty good. Um, there's actually some behind the scenes stuff I want to show here. Uh, so let's hop to that. So this is the Monster Team Manager script. Um, it's one of the scripts I made in order to bring the system uh, to life. And th this is uh, sort of the main script. The other ones that I made for the team management are mostly UI driven um, or UI focused, I should say, where they're basically turning buttons on and off and uh, specifying what functionality those buttons have. Um, this is the one that actually takes care of your team. It holds a list of which four monsters are in your team, and the list is of capacity four. Um, and it has the functionality to add monsters, remove them from the team, and move them around the team. This is what the arrow buttons do. And when I add in a switch button, I'll uh, be putting it into here. Also, if we scroll down, I made an enum uh, that has uh, the different types of uh, move types, I called them, that, that you can do. So you can see I added the switch in here uh, for the future, uh, but right now you can move up and down. And so the move monsters in team, it takes in the monster that wants to move and the type of move that it wants to do, and it uh, executes that move. Um, I'm hoping that this will work when I add the switch move as well, but I might have to tweak a few things for that. Uh, but overall, this is a pretty short script, pretty simple for now. It'll probably get more complex as time goes on. Okay, so looking back at this plan, I've gotten most of it done, um, except for two pieces here. And both of these pieces have to do with the player being out of the ranch. The reason I skipped these is because I don't really have a good infrastructure already set up for figuring out where the player is, um, or rather when the player is out of the ranch. I don't think it would be that hard to set up, but since I didn't have that already made, I decided I'm going to leave these till the end of this plan. And once I get the combat system and the wild monsters kind of working, I'll, um, I'll try to implement both of these and maybe along with a switch button for switching the monsters place in the team. So I was about to start working on the turn-based battle system and I came to the realization that it might make more sense to do the wild monster encounters first. Um, I, I think it's going to be easier, and I think it's going to make more sense for um, when I have the battle scene ready to be able to enter it in a in in the same way that the player normally would, and then worry about what goes on in the battle scene. So I think I'm actually going to start with the wild monster encounters, which right now looks very barren here. Uh, all all I want to do right now is to when you go to an area that has wild monsters. Uh, interacting with them, in other words, them running into you, will initiate combat, um, which will open up the uh, battle scene. Now, this could get more elaborate. I would like, obviously, for the monsters to be running around and chasing the player and that kind of thing, but I haven't decided if I want to do that just yet, or just let the player go up to the monsters and touch them to initiate combat. The reason being that I'm thinking of redoing the way the AI system works. So the monsters are kind of just running around the ranch right now, and it seems to be working fine, but I wanted to tweak a couple of things with the AI. Um, I'm using the A-star uh, pathfinding AI, and I'm not as familiar with it as I should be. So I, I want to learn a little bit more about it and tweak it a little bit more. Um, so that it works a little bit better with my vision of how the AI should function in my game. However, whether I want to do that before or after I implement uh, wild creatures moving, 
Um, I just haven't decided yet. I think it's going to depend on how motivated I am to work with the AI versus how much I want to see this system coming to life. But nevertheless, I'm going to start working on the wild monsters right now. So I'm basically just going to put together a monster that will uh, sit in one place for now um, and can be run into in order to initiate combat. All right, so here we are in the forest wilderness scene. You might recognize it from the first introduction video. Um, and it's just a really quick and simple scene that I threw together um, to show off mostly the idea that there would be uh, a wilderness that you can explore in addition to having your ranch in your town. Um, but out here, we'll find monsters and other things. You'll be able to gather things um, in these trees. They're, they're sort of functional for gathering, but not really, so I'm not going to go into that right now. But what is new here is uh, this little guy right here. He's a slime, and he doesn't animate right now because uh, I decided I was going to do the animation stuff when I get him moving around chasing the player. But when I interact with him, or rather when I run into him, because he has a collider on, uh, it takes me to a battle scene. And it, there's not a lot going on here right now. There's no monsters on your side. There's no enemies on this side. Um, but if you can imagine, that's what that's what will be there eventually. I also need to change the UI. Um, I don't think that it, there's any point in showing the player's hotbar or even this stuff uh, while you're in battle. Um, uh, you can see the time is paused and that is intentional. Um, time won't tick while you're in while you while you're in a battle, so you don't have to worry about um, it getting late or something. Uh, and uh, that's really all I have right now for this. I can press a button to get out of battle, um, so I have a way to enter battle and exit battle. And of course, it takes me to a new scene and to a uh, new area there. Um, and the next step, of course, is filling that in uh, with commands that you can use, turning off this UI and uh, actually having monsters populate the battle. Unfortunately, there's no way we're going to be able to dive into the turn-based combat system itself in this video. It's already getting pretty long, and that's going to be a pretty big undertaking. However, I'm really happy with everything I've been able to get done this time, and I'm really excited to dive into turn-based combat. I'll have to take a couple of sidetracks as I deal with that. For example, abilities, and those will be fairly intertwined with combat. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think I'm going to have a lot of cool stuff to show. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of Amber Roots and more devlogs, subscribe for more videos. And I do hope you'll join me for the next video. Until then, see you next time, and thanks a lot for watching.